What's up guys? Welcome back to another daily Bible reading snapshot. And today we are starting one of the most important books of the Bible. Now you might not think of Deuteronomy like that, but if you give it a fair reading over the next couple of weeks, as we read this book, I hope that you grow to love it as much as I have, because certainly when I looked at Deuteronomy when I was in junior high, I probably didn't think about it as one of the most important books in the Bible. But as I've read it over the years, and as I've learned so much from it, it's amazing how there are so many truths in this book that we can take straight into our Christian life here from the book of Deuteronomy. So what's Deuteronomy all about? First of all, I talked about how the book of Numbers that we just finished was mostly a narrative book. And when it be my narrative, it's like the Gospels, it's telling a story. Now, the book of Deuteronomy is a little bit more like the book of Romans in the New Testament or the book of 1 Corinthians. It's, it's communication, right? And the communication is not by letter to other people. How this is communicated is Moses is talking to the generation that's about to inhabit the land. So remember, the book of Numbers and the book of Leviticus and even Exodus is cataloging the time period from when they go out of the land of Egypt and before they enter the land. So Deuteronomy is right before they enter the land. And if you remember what happened to the people of Israel while they were on their way to the land, well, they sinned. They complained against God. And God said, every person over 20 years old is going to die in the wilderness. So who's standing right here? Who are the people that are listening to the book of Deuteronomy? It's the people who were either born in the desert or people who were less than 20 years old when the Exodus happened. So everybody is basically 60 and under, which makes sense, that's the majority of the population anyway, but these people are about to enter the land. Now, when's the last time they gave the law? Because if we look at the book of Deuteronomy, we look at the the, the word itself, it means second law. Um, You can see the word duet at the beginning, (laughs) and uh, nami, or or namos is the Greek word for, for law. So second law, it's the second giving of the law. When was the law first given? It was first given at Sinai, if you remember, Exodus 20, 21, 22, 23, all those things. The people of Israel received God's law and God's expectation for them at Mount Sinai. But what's the problem? These people were all kids or a lot of them hadn't even been born yet. So they need a formal giving of the law and that's what happens. So this book is going to explain some things. First of all, the first two chapters, what they're all about is cataloging the history of Israel before they got into the land. And it's reminding the people, why did your fathers and moms and grandparents not enter the land? Why did they not enter the land? It's because they didn't obey God. That's the main idea of the book, right? They didn't obey God. Now, as you guys are going into the land, you need to obey God. And there's a phrase that comes up over and over again. And it's this, do not forget. Do not forget. Don't forget. And sometimes it's put in a positive way. Make sure you remember. Remember what the Lord did. So don't forget God's rules as you enter the land. That is the main theme of the book of Deuteronomy. So um, we're going to see how this plays out all the way through here. As you read today, you're going to see God cataloging again the ways that the Israelites sinned in the wilderness. And we're really going to read that in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. I think all the way till, yeah, about chapter 4 is when we start to turn to this generation and talking about them. So that's what we're reading in in the Old Testament. Get ready because it's a great book and you will learn so much from it if you apply yourself to learn. So, all right, let's turn to the New Testament. Let's look at Mark chapter 11. Mark 11, this might be familiar territory to you. Mark 11 is when the triumphal entry happens or what we call Palm Sunday, where Jesus goes into the city of Jerusalem before he dies. So this is the last week before his death one week before his resurrection, really. Uh, Seems like it happened on a Sunday. So he enters the village, and not the village, he goes from the village, he enters the big city of Jerusalem, and people are praising him, uh, quoting that that, um, Old Testament quotation, Hosanna, that word, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Um, glory to God in the highest. So that's what they're talking about, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the coming of the kingdom of our father David. That's verse 10 here in Mark 11. So that all happens. And then that same scene that was so important, if you remember from the Gospel of Matthew, we see here in verse 12 about the fig tree, that Jesus curses the fig tree. What's that all about? It's reminding everybody around, specifically the disciples, Jesus says, this tree is not bearing fruit, so it's going to wither and it's not going to have any fruitfulness anymore. It had time to bear fruit and now it's not bearing fruit, so it's going to be judged. 
Same thing is happening with these people, this crowd. And if you look, what's the very next thing that happens? Jesus enters the temple, and what do they do? Are they doing all these great sacrifices to the Lord? Are they serving God with a pure heart? That's not what they're doing. They're not bearing fruit. They turned the temple of God into a place where they could just make a ton of money. They were turning the temple of God into a temple of greed for themselves. And Jesus is fed up with that. He doesn't want to hear any of that. So what he goes in and does, it, it, he turns over the tables. With righteous indignation, Jesus comes in and, and wipes out the, the commerce that's happening there. Because it was wrong. Because it was greedy. Because it was sinful for these people to do. And that really is a small little reflection of what we see with the fig tree. Remember from the book of Matthew, we saw how we saw the, the Jews were constantly rejecting Jesus. We're going to get that same... Uh, narrative here. And if you notice, as you read, it's very similar to Matthew at this point. Very, very similar. It actually follows the same structure. So this is why a lot of people look at Matthew and look at Mark and they say, which one came first? It seems like they might have read each other's gospels here. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. Maybe God just wanted them to write the same story. Um, but maybe one looked at the other. We don't really know. Um, but anyway, what we see here is very similar to Matthew. So you should recognize this. And this is what's helpful, reading Matthew by itself and then reading Mark by itself. We see how there's connections between these two books and that we can learn from both of them about what Jesus did. So there's a lot of things to do today as we read, a lot of things to consider in the book of Deuteronomy as we start, but hopefully you'll be encouraged to be faithfully committed to reading the Bible every day after reading today's. So we'll see you back tomorrow for another daily Bible reading snapshot.